Form validation and providing appropriate visual feedback is very important. Over the next couple of videos, let's take a look at validation in template-driven forms. Let's begin by understanding how Angular helps us with form validation by tracking the state of the form controls and applying the appropriate classes. I've got this snapshot from Angular Docs which points very clearly what class is applied to a form control based on its state and validity. At any point in time, Angular applies three classes to a form control based on its state. The first pair of classes you see here are dependent on whether the user has visited the form control or not. When you load a form for the very first time, you have not yet visited a form field. So Angular applies a class of ng-untouched. If you do visit the form control, either by clicking or tabbing and then navigating away from the form control, Angular applies a class of ng-touched. The key point here is that the class will change only on blur. You have to navigate away from the form control. So if the form control has been visited, ng-touched class is applied. If not, ng-untouched class is going to be applied. On similar lines, Angular also tracks if the value of the form control has changed or not. Again, when you load a form for the very first time, the value has not yet changed. So Angular applies a class of ng-pristine. If you do change the value of the form control, Angular applies a class of ng-dirty. For example, when you start typing a value into the input field, the class changes from ng-pristine to ng-dirty. And the final pair of classes is concerned with the validity of the form control. If the form control's value is valid, ng-valid class is applied. If not, ng-invalid is applied. For example, if an input field contains the required attribute, it implies that a value has to be entered. If a value is missing, ng-valid class, sorry, ng-invalid class is applied. And when a value is entered, ng-valid class is going to be applied. So let's take a look at these classes in our enrollment form. I'm going to go back to Visual Studio Code and over here to the name input element, I am going to add a template reference variable, pound name. And then instead of binding to the form data, so let's remove that. I am going to bind to the inputs class name property. So name, which is the reference variable, dot class name. Let's save this and take a look at the browser. You can see right away that the classes being applied to the input element are displayed. We have form control, which is the bootstrap class that we have applied. So ignoring that, you can see we have three other classes applied to the name input element. ng-untouched, ng-pristine, and ng-valid. All three are from Angular. ng-untouched is based on whether the form field has been visited or not. On page load, the form field has not been visited, and hence Angular applies a class of ng-untouched. Now when I click on the input element, you can see that the class doesn't change even though the input element has been visited. However, on blur, the class does change. When I tab out, you can see that ng-untouched is now changed to ng-touched. Similarly, we have ng-pristine and ng-dirty based on whether the value of the form field has changed or not. On page load, the value hasn't changed. So Angular applies ng-pristine. If I change the value, 
to Robo. You can see that ng pristine now changed to ng dirty. And finally, Angular applies ng valid or ng invalid classes based on the form field's validity. Now, to test this, we need some sort of a rule on the input element. So I'm going to add the required attribute. If you go back to the browser, you can see the class ng valid is applied, which makes perfect sense because there is a value already entered. If I, however, clear out the value, you can see that ng valid changes to ng invalid. So as you can see, Angular tries to help us out with form validation by applying the appropriate classes to the form controls. Now, although these classes can be used to provide visual feedback, Angular also provides an alternative, which I feel is better as well. For each of the classes, Angular provides an associated property on the ng-model directive. The property is basically the same as the class with the ng-dash removed. ng-untouched has an associated property on the ng-model which is untouched. ng-touched has touched. ng-pristine has pristine and similarly the other classes. So let's quickly take a look at these properties in our enrollment form. Now the question is how do we get access to the ng model properties? The answer is by simply creating a reference to the ng model directive. Right now, the name template reference variable points to the input element in the DOM. By assigning it a value of ng model, the reference variable now points to the ng model of this particular form control. So now that we have a reference to ng model, we can easily bind to the different properties. Let's start with untouched. So name dot untouched. Save this and head to the browser. And you can see that the property is set to true. If I click inside and then blur, you can see that it changes to false. Similarly, let's take a look at pristine. So name dot pristine. Go back to the browser. On page load, it's true. And altering the value is going to set it to false. Finally, we also have the valid property. So name dot valid. The input field has a value and hence the property is true. Clear it out and you can see that it changes to false. So you can see that the properties return a Boolean value, which is much more easier to work with than class names. But I wanted to make sure you understand the different ways Angular helps us track the state and validity of form controls. In the next video, let's see how the ng model properties can be utilized to provide visual feedback to the user as they are filling out a form. I'll see you guys in the next video.